When it comes to experiencing art, many will say to you that art comes from within. What does that mean? It means that everyday experiences, emotions or not, is in fact what inspires what they put on a canvas. It's what they chop out in a carving or a sculpture, for example. When it comes to being a woman in the arts, it's hard to imagine that just that femininity doesn't influence what it is that they sketch, draw or in fact put in pastel. We now have Bongi Bengu with us who is one of those women who have found her way to becoming whole through her art. Welcome to the studio Bongi. Thank you very much. Um, a young woman who has had a very very rich history. You were born in KwaZulu-Natal but at a very young age you were moved out of KZN and you found yourself in Europe. Tell us more about it. Yeah, at the age of eight years old, we had to move to Switzerland because my father was actively involved in politics. And then my mother, she painted this beautiful picture of Switzerland that has, was full of snow and chocolate and skiing. <laughs> but when we arrived, we experienced a different reality, which was um, the challenge of adjusting to a new environment making new friends, learning French and English. Because you didn't speak, uh, you didn't speak any English no, as I didn't, you were growing no, I up? Didn't, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so here you were in this foreign country and one of the things of course that you would have discovered that if you didn't speak any English where you were, you would have been in a completely Zulu uh, culture, neighborhood yeah. and environment. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now you're going to the land of only people colored milk colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more about that. Well, in, in the book, I talk about that experience because I find that most people, when you tell them that I grew up in Switzerland, they think, wow, how lucky you were. But they don't realize that um, it was a challenging experience. And so I think it's important to also talk about the other side, talk yeah. about the exile experience. Mm. What are the challenges that you faced? The feeling of being the other feeling of being the only black in the class, yeah. Did, Longing did, for home, feeling homesick. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have a distinct feeling that you were somewhere that was far, even though you had your family with you, yeah. you were far away from, from where you were meant to be? Yeah, definitely, definitely, yeah. yeah. So how did you find the arts or how did the arts find you? Well, in, during my last two years of high school, I went to Swaziland and I did a research project which made me travel to artist studios all over Johannesburg. And after that, there was no turning back. So you did get to come, come back to South Africa or the continent of Africa yeah. at some point when you were young? Uh, yeah, yeah, during my last two years of high school, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You came on your own? Yeah, to, to boarding school. Okay. At Waterford, Camp Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. from Waterford, you you found the arts. Yeah. How do you tell your parents that you are choosing a uh, career in the arts? <laughs> well, it it wasn't easy, because I know that my parents wanted me to be a historian, because I was good in, in history and English. Mm. But um, after I went to Washington D.C. and um, I graduated with a distinction, cum laude, and I received a number of awards. Uh, in, in, in the, the genre of art? Yeah, in, in fine arts. Okay. Then afterwards, they never said anything. <laughs> <laughs> All From they could do was support me. <laughs> From there, everything yeah. got easy, did yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. how did you get to Washington, D.C., and where did you go to school? From Swaziland, I went straight to Washington, D.C. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you studied where, and you studied what precisely? At Mount Vernon College. All right. Yeah, I studied fine art. And it was an all-female college, Yeah, it was correct? an all-women college. All my professors were, were women, so... And the students? Also, uh, when you also say all-women, women, yeah, you yeah. mean the professors as well as the students? Well, yeah, most of the professors were women and also the, the students were all women. Was that the reason you chose it? Um, <laughs> not really, not really. But I found that it, it had an impact on me because those women were very strong and they were, they became like role models for me. Yeah. It had to have been just yeah. the most amazing and empowering yeah. experience yeah. as yeah. a woman, eh? Yeah, yeah definitely.
So then you, you, be, you begin to find the artist in you, is it? While you're at university. Yes, definitely, definitely. So, so then help me understand what type of art did you begin with? What was your induction into art? Well, I had to draw everything. I had to do still lives, landscapes. Um, but one thing I remember was the color scheme. Uh -huh. uh, I used a lot of greens and reds. And then when I moved to South Africa, to UCT, I started doing my MFA. The colors changed completely. Oh, really? I started using browns, earth colors. And I, I was using art as a way to connect to my roots. Tell me. Is that generally what, what would happen, depending on your experience and, uh, for you and where you found yourself in your, in, in your life, your colors tended to, to go wherever your heart was, so to speak? Yeah, definitely. I think my work is similar to Van Gogh in the sense that I've been going through a lot of changes. And as I change and as I grow, the work changes and, and the colors change. Mm. Now, you, you do what is called visual art. Would one yeah. say that, that, is, that visual art is simply paintings, or is it more? Um, no, visual art is much more than painting. Some people do video, some people do performance. Um, I prefer to, to paint. <laughs> I prefer the more traditional mediums, because mm. I find that they allow me to be more spontaneous. And it's a, it's a quiet world though, painting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's about, yeah, it's about me expressing myself, my emotions, going deep in, into, my, into myself and expressing myself. Now, at some point, um, you, would, you were dubbed as doing art that was called women-centric. Why yeah. do you think that was? Well, I think uh, for a long time I've been focusing on, on celebrating women in my work. Um, I think that began when I did my MFA thesis at UCT. My theme was about women and power. And I've been focusing a lot on, on women issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now I feel that as I grow uh, as an artist, I feel like I, I wish I could have the platform to talk about any issue <laughs> and I like to make my work as universal as possible and that uh, is something yeah. that is something you can do with maturity isn't it yeah I hope so <laughs> <laughs> um, women women's eccentricities however mm -hmm. it's a it's a big mass I mean there's mm -hmm. a lot you can cover with it yeah definitely but I think there's also a danger of um, as a women artist of being boxed in and as an artist, you need to be as free as possible. You mm. need to be as free to say whatever you want to say without any restrictions. Are you feeling free as an artist at this point? Yes, I am. I am. I think that's why I came here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to express that freedom. Yeah. So, so help me understand where your work and your art is taking you now. Uh, <laughs> I think my art is becoming more and more semi-abstract before I was more into faces but now it's becoming more abstract uh, what else can I say how do you um, how do you get do you uh, I mean how do you get to from faces to semi-abstract you stand in front of your canvas you pull out your colors and whatever comes into your head you simply interpret onto onto a canvas yeah I think pretty much I think earlier on I used to sketch I used to start with sketches, but now I just, I prefer just to start and let everything happen. When did, when did the market, when did people first begin to pay attention to the work of Bongi Bengu? I think it's when I had my first solo show in Cape Town at the gallery called AVA, when I presented the work for my master's thesis. And when was that? That was 1997. Wow. That's like more than 15 years ago now. How does that feel like, your first show? <laughs> it was a very daunting experience, yeah. I think you f as an artist, you feel like you're standing naked in a room full of people. 
and there's nothing you can hide because everything is expressed on the canvas. And once you put it out there, I mean, you really, uh, yeah, you're standing naked and people can say and whatever it is yeah. that they want. And they talk as if you're not there. As if <laughs> <laughs> and you're standing there thinking, what? <laughs> yeah, it's a very strange experience. <laughs> so what happened after that first show? Then I started getting invitations for group shows. I started getting media publicity. You started getting your first um, bit of media attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it just continued, you sitting on my couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the media first began to pick up that mm -hmm. um, you're an artist and an yeah. artist of worth, yeah. um, from that point on, you must have realized that um, this is not, this might get a little more complicated, but also exciting, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think the most exciting part is the travel aspect. Having exhibitions internationally, meeting new people. Yeah, How has your international travels, the more recent ones, for example, influenced your work? Um, I think interacting with other artists from other countries help, really helps you to grow. Mm -hmm. Exchanging ideas, because I think that's what art is about. It's about creating dialogue, raising questions, making people think, make, making people see things in a different way. And that's pretty much what you attempt to do through your art, I presume. Yeah. yeah. So are your, are your pieces beautiful pieces that I, I will say, okay, I have to have that, or are they talking pieces? Are they talking points? I think the, there's several layers to my work. I think on the surface, you can be attracted to the beauty, to the colors, but I think um, my aim is to go deeper than that. I like to, to move people with my works. I, I, like, I like people to be touched emotionally by my work. What do you enjoy like, more, talking or painting? Painting, definitely. <laughs> Because you get to speak through, through colour. Yeah. And it's a universal language. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you've had international shows. Tell us where they were. In London, in, um, in India, Canary Islands, um, Ghana. When you do these shows, as well as gallery shows, I yeah. mean, um, are, they all, are they exhibition shows or are they sale? shows or do you, do they tend to do you tend to mix them both sometimes there are more exhibition shows and the works are not for sale okay but usually there are selling shows where the works are available for selling or do you have to be there you don't really have to be there to sell i mean once people have seen your work they can go to a catalog right how do these things work sometimes it helps to be there <laughs> To talk people through, yeah, through yeah, what the experience yeah, of, yeah. of your painting is. Yeah. So where to from here for, for Bongi? I mean, where are you right now? I know that, you, that you're, um, you're beginning to inculcate more of your culture in your pieces. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that it's taken a whole new road. Mm -hmm. How far are you down the journey of where your pieces are taking you now? Well, I see, I see this as a beginning. I think there's still a lot more to come. And I have a lot of ideas. Um, next week I'm taking part in a show in Durban, which is about celebrating the pioneers. But it's also about um, established artists collaborating with um, emerging artists and about mentoring younger artists. So I'm interested in doing that. Um, I'm also interested in teaching art to children. Because I think it's important to, to teach the young ones. Well, Bongi, I wish you all the best. Uh, I, I have an understanding now of how your art has evolved. And one of the most important things one can do is celebrate the women in the arts. Um, and in fine arts, uh, I've seen your work. They are phenomenal. And I just want to congratulate you on all the work that you've